Hello everyone and welcome to our latest Cloudscape tutorial. Now in this case we're gonna tackle a quick question that we're getting quite a lot recently and that is how can we make some really tiny clouds that would fit into a room or some kind of a stylistic rendering or a more artistic kind of still. So there are a number of ways we could achieve this and in this case let's start with the simplest and quickest one and that is to actually use another uh, plugin that we sell called Mesh to Volume tool. So what we're going to do is go to Mesh to Volume, Materials. We're going to grab the M underscore Volume Preview and we're going to create a material instance right here. We're going to call it uh, Tiny, whoops, Tiny Cloud 1. Uh, we're just going to open this up. And as you can see, we have a cloud texture here already. So next, we're going to go into our Cloudscape cloud volumes, 2D textures, and we're just gonna grab any texture from here. Uh, we can grab one, just the, whoops, just the first one, it doesn't really matter. Now the important thing is to maybe change the X and Y frames, but we kind of use a 16 by 16 slices for everything we have so far, so there isn't really a need to change any of these steps. These are mostly quality settings. So now that we have this, uh, let's get a cube, place it into our level like so and find our new material and just apply to the cube and there we go we have a tiny cloud now the limitation of this is that this is all done in in material uh, via ray marching so it doesn't quite interact with the lighting automatically as all of our other clouds for example if we grab the sunlight you might see that it already doesn't quite match up but also yeah it's kind of like an unlit material and in order to get it to look a bit better you do need to change these sort of light vectors and uh, parameters for example this here controls the direction of the light and overall this requires a bit of manual tweaking and another limitation at the moment is that this method doesn't really receive or uh, cast shadows. For example, if we were to place another cube in front of it, it's not really going to block the sunlight. So the upside is that this is sort of fairly efficient. You can control the number of steps and samples here. So right now it's 64, 32, maybe we can go down to 16 and you can sort of see it how it, uh, well, it either works or it doesn't. So this has a quite a decent amount of customer of customization it can look pretty good and it's fairly localized so in this case like if it's on screen it's going to be like uh, taxing for example to render and as you look away from it it's pretty self-contained it's not like the massive sort of sky clouds that you see so this is the quickest and easiest way to do it uh, let's go now to uh, approach number two right for our second approach we're actually going to be using the sort of built-in unreal engine volumetric cloud system and uh, Cloudscape itself. So first thing that we need to recognize is that the default sort of settings are really catered to rendering these types of clouds that are kilometers in scale and really far away from the camera. And this is what the system is really good to, uh, for by default. Now to change things, we are going to be rendering a cloud that is much, much smaller, probably a couple of meter across. So let's get started. So first of all, let's grab one of our uh, Cloudscape actors, uh, actually click on the Cloudscape base, enable live sky, and let's just uh, get the rotation as expected, uh, maybe something like so. Uh, let's see that we have a nice looking cloud, perfect. Next, we're gonna bring it way down in size to 0 0.05 something like that and you can see that it's pretty much disappeared and it's really far away so let's bring it to more or less our camera origin now at this stage you're gonna see like a big blue screen and that is because the billboard for these actors is really meant to be edited again kilometers away now this is kind of difficult to work with so by pressing the G button by default in the editor you could just sort of hide and uh, we could see that we have a sort of noise field which is great at the moment it means that things are happening so, in order to get our cloud to actually render correctly, we're gonna have to use some insanely high values for sample count uh, range and view sample count scale. Now, typically, if you've seen our previous video, like a value of around 50 
can give us some really nice cinematic quality sky while being fairly taxing. Now, in this case, we're going to use some really high values around 900,000. So first, what we need to do is make a couple of changes just so our GPU doesn't outright crash. And now the current limitation of this is that we need to bring that uh, the rendering distance way low. So to start this off, uh, their bottom altitude, we're going to leave that to zero because this cloud is fairly close to the ground. So we want to be able to render it. Layer height will basically means that clouds above a certain height will stop rendering. So we're going to bring this way down to 0 0.01. And all of our larger clouds in the distance will disappear. But you could see our noisy sort of boy here is, uh, well, it's still here. Next, planet radius, we don't really care about it. And these uh, shadows and reflection sample counts, we're not really going to mess with at the moment. Next, we're going to do the tracing max distance. And for that, we're going to use a value of 0 0.05. Next up, tracing start distance. We're going to set that to 0 for now. Um, use per light transmission. This is mostly a visual effect, so we're not going to really mess with it. And next, for view sample count scale, we're going to go for a value of 1, 10, I mean 10,000. So we're good. Next, we're going to select the expand view sample count and we're going to set it to 900,000. And as you can see, our cloud just instantly became smooth. And now as we move the camera, we could kind of see our cloud is happening. So let's just grab our actor here and ooh, let's just make sure it's uniformly scaled now just for the sake of easily being able to edit it. And there we go. Now our cloud is here. You could see it. It's looking pretty good. And as we kind of move away from it even a little bit, you could see it stops being rendered. So to address this, let's grab our uh, Cloudscape base. And instead of zero, let's set this to something like one. And now you can see that we could kind of move away from it and it's still being rendered. Now, what is the size of this cloud? A great way to do this is just to drop in the cube, which is a meter by meter by default into the cloud. And right now it's a bit difficult to kind of gauge it, but you could see that the cube is casting a shadow on the cloud. It's looking pretty good and it's all volumetric and looking pretty nice. Now, there are a couple of extra things that we should change just because we've been messing with the scale of a lot of the settings here. We also need to address a few other settings like density. For example, by default, we really should be getting a density of something like 1000 just to get the sort of cloud like visuals. Next up, we're going to select our base actor and we're going to select our cloud final draw material. So we're going to select this. Um, we're going to set the MIP level for our cloud texture to zero, and that's going to give us some extra details. Add noise, we're just going to remove this as this is the sort of animation noise that's like really massive normally, and we can use it to distort clouds for extra details, which isn't something we really need right now. And a couple of settings that I personally like to do now, th these are up for sort of artistic interpretation, but the MS contribution, for example, from 0 0.5, I like to do it to 0 0.9 the um, next setting, the multi-scattering eccentricity, we're going to leave it as is. Occlusion, we're going to bump it up to 0 0.5. Phase A, I'd like to set it to 0. And phase B to 1. Next up, phase blend is pretty good. And efficiency, we can sharpen this cloud up by increasing it by, whoops, a bit too much, but there we go. This is looking pretty good. Now, something that you may have noticed is that our cloud at the moment isn't really casting any self shadows. So to do that, we need to change the shadow tracing distance. Now, a value of five is really good when you're rendering clouds kilometers across in the sky. But in this case, something like 0 0.01 is pretty good. And you can see that we got a little bit of shadow here. And shadow view sample count, maybe like five or even 10. So this costs us quite a bit of performance. So maybe something like five for now. Let's grab our actor and maybe increase the density to 
to thousand and things are looking pretty good uh, just so we can bring some of those shadows detail we're gonna set the MS scattering contribution to 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 something like that and maybe just sort of make it a bit more contrasty yeah this is pretty good so now we could see that our cloud is uh, self-shadowing and everything and it's looking quite good detailed and wispy uh, you could change these settings as to your heart's desire and if we were to place a cube in it or sort of a building around it or a room we could see that it's casting a shadow it's interacting as we'd expected so overall this is the sort of most uh, complex way you could approach this but it does give the best visuals as a full-on uh, ray marched volumetric cloud with all the bells and whistles of the atmospheric light and directional light uh, casting receiving shadows and just getting details across uh, next up we're gonna look at the third approach the final approach that we're going to look is by using volumetric fog. Now volumetric fog and volumetric clouds are done slightly differently in Unreal Engine. And in this case, we're gonna look at Fogscape. Now this is available as a standalone product or as part of Cloudscape. So either way, you will have access to this as well. So the way that these, these are basically volumetric materials that you can apply to something like a cube, for example. So really big cubes. And let's look at how we could get some higher quality visuals. Now, to start us off, the fog by default looks a bit more blurry and uh, we've kind of exaggerated the effects here. And you could sort of get slightly pixelated looking visuals farther away. And um, something to note with the fog is that you're now dealing with voxels and we have our own sort of fog material here with a few additional uh, parameters that are exposed but perhaps the main one is to limit the volumetric fog distance. Now, the again, much like with the clouds, the lower the rendering distance, the higher quality you will get. So view distance right now is uh, 2000. Let's see if we can get something like 1000. You could see that we have lost quite a bit of the farther away fog. But for example, if we were to get one of these guys and just really scale it well, really low to something like room size, this is generally the limitation of, of approaches one and two is that they are kind of distance based. So if this is like an interior setting where you are dealing with uh, the necessity for tiny clouds, this really isn't an issue. But if it's something for like an outside environment, this is where you might start running into a few limitations. So here we have our sort of fog. Let's grab our uh, volumetric fog base and maybe lower the view distance to 500 and things are looking pretty good now for example uh, hide. we could open up this material instance and increase the sort of uh, visibility of it we could also maybe lower the shadow distance and we get some kind of a self shadowy kind of uh, approach. Now, again, in terms of quality, this approach isn't really the best one, but in terms of efficiency, this is probably the fastest one to render. And uh, well, how can we improve the fog a bit further? Well, actually we can stop some of this wiggling by setting the noise distortion to zero. So we could just get a nice sort of volumetric texture being rendered. And this is by using a couple of C variables. R dot volumetric fog history weight. I like to set this to 0 0.2 as it can remove some of the uh, ghosting that you get with fog. Though it does introduce a little 
bit of jittering sometimes. So this is a bit of a balancing act depending on the visuals that you're after. This tends to give us slightly sharper looking uh, fog. So next up, I'm going to be typing R depth distribution scale and set that to something around 80 or maybe let's see whoops i think 80 is pretty good in this case next up um we're gonna set the r we're gonna set the quick the grid size z to something high like 512 and this basically tells us how many voxels they are going to be going outwards from the camera and if we set it to 512 we instantly get some really nice high quality uh, renders of our fog texture and we're also going to set the grid pixel size to something like four uh, ideally maybe something like six works as well but it does give us some sort of blurriness and aliasing uh, four gives us pretty much all the details we could want in this case and maybe we could try something like three for even higher details and right now you could see that we're maybe starting to get some some sort of a limitation just from the general volumetric fog texture so the great thing about this approach is that it once again it pretty much works with uh, unreal engines lighting so for example if we have another object here so long as our sun is casting volumetric shadows this will work uh, in this case Foxscape's uh, self-shadowing that you can see is uh, faked through our material we've kind of have a custom solution for this so you may need to do some additional tweaks to get it looking just right but overall this is kind of like a probably a middle ground approach now as you've seen with the other uh, things that we've shown this also does kind of limit the range at which the volumetric fog will be uh, visible for example some of our larger actors here have become a lot less visible but if this is a sort of a subtle effect that you're using for indoors or a highly localized kind of environment this is something you could do and if you want you can extend the sort of uh, mechanics through some basic blueprints where the values that we just shown the console variables can be adjusted once a player character or something enters a certain environment that requires more detailed fog actors. So overall, these are pretty much all the methods that you could do to achieve some really small scale clouds. Some are a bit more expensive than others. They each have their uh, benefits and their uh, drawbacks. So it really depends on what you're after, what's the sort of overall point of your uh, environment. Uh, the fog for example works a bit better in motion whereas the large whereas the atmospheric clouds approach sometimes leaves some aliasing trails or noise depending on ren on your rendering settings or pre-rendering settings or anti-aliasing settings you may be able to comp combat that or completely eliminate it but again it's uh, up to you guys to see what works best for you so without further ado go make awesome things <laughs>